Take your Bible tonight and go to Psalm 8, please. The 8th Psalm. Nine verses in this psalm. We're just going to read them responsibly, beginning in verse 1, and read the entire psalm and end together on verse number 9. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture, all of us standing, and we'll begin together on verse 1 of Psalm 8. Ready? O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of the scripture here this evening. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for preserving it and allowing us to have copies of it in our hands tonight. And Lord, we pray that you will honor the word of God tonight once again in each one of our hearts and lives and that each of us will give our careful attention to your word this evening. Thank you for the music this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies that we've heard. And I pray, Lord, that you'll now make our hearts ready to receive the truth from your word as we listen carefully to what the Spirit would say to each one of us. Bless the special now. In Jesus' name, amen. For making the sun to shine, putting the stars in the sky, the flowers that bloom, the ocean so blue, Thank you, Lord, for the sparrow that sings. It makes sweet melody for the rivers that flow, the rain and the snow. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me thank you lord i just want to thank you lord I just want to thank you lord making me whole saving my soul thank you lord for my home and family for life's joys you've given to me shoes on my feet plenty to eat thank you lord for the church where i worship and pray for the freedoms that i have today sweet spirit i feel your presence so real thank you lord i just want to thank you lord i just want to thank you lord for everything you've done for me thank you lord i just want to thank you lord i just want to thank you lord for making me whole saving my soul thank you lord for being a friend so dear giving my sad heart cheer for holding my hand when i could not stand thank you lord for giving your life for me on the cross of calvary for taking my place mercy and grace 
thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Bob. Praise the Lord. That's good, isn't it? We could just pray now and go eat. I didn't say we would, I said we could. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like, man, I want to mess this up. Amen. It's been good to be in church tonight, hadn't it? Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for being good to us. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. I'm sure thankful that you're our God tonight. We have the privilege to serve you with our life. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us as we just share a few thoughts from Psalm 8. Lord, I, I realize tonight that I'm talking to tired people, folks who, many of them given it everything they have, and some uh, so far on the other side of tired, they weren't able to be here this evening, and I pray you'll strengthen them. But Lord, I pray this uh, message will be a help, it'll be an encouragement while we take just a, a few moments to thank you for your goodness to us. We love you, and Lord, we pray that you'll guide and direct in our thoughts here in these next few moments as we look into Psalm 8. And I'll thank you for it, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. You know, as David looks at, if we open your Bible to Psalm 8, I, I don't intend to be very long uh, this evening. I do know you're tired, I'm tired, and uh, we, I don't want to keep you unduly long. But you know, what, what's amazing here in Psalm 8 is that David takes the time to reflect upon God. You know, there's one thing that's kind of been lost in our day and age is people taking the time to say thank you. Uh, taking the time to be courteous, uh, to have manners, to say please or you're welcome. Um, I, I observe sometimes you eat out at restaurants, you know, I... I catch myself, I try every time that they come and the waiter or waitress comes to fill a drink or bring you something to say thank you. Uh, I realize, I mean, people say, why should I say thank you? It's their job. Uh, because it's nice. Uh, it's proper. It's good manners uh, to, to stay in the habit of being thankful and uh, to being saying please and such. In fact, I read where nearly 70% a people question in Associated Press poll uh, said that they believe people are ruder now than they were 30 years ago. Uh, I think there may be true. And part of that, they say, they, they laid the fault where the fault was. They said they felt like the fault was in parents not teaching their children uh, to be grateful and to say thank you and to say please and, and having rude behavior. And, and certainly we have to set the right example for that at home uh, you know, mom and dad, children don't get what they what you say; they get what you are. And so, if you want to, if you want them, you know, a lot of times it's it's amazing. Little children, where do they learn to talk? They learn to talk by listening to you, and uh, they begin to repeat words that they hear from you. And so, if you want them to have manners and to say please and thank you, and uh, you have to teach them that by saying it yourself. And oftentimes, I think it's that people aren't intentionally wanting to be rude, but I think that they're, that they're always in a hurry. And you know what happens when you're in a hurry? You don't take time for people. Uh, I find myself sometimes when uh, somebody wants you to stop and talk to somebody and, and you find yourself wanting to edge away or, you know, I, I, I got to get going, you know what I mean? And you feel like, and really you don't have to get going, but you just, it's hard to just stop, slow down, and talk to somebody. One of the hardest things you do is what Brother Wallace said is when, when you see somebody side of the road and the Lord kind of pricks your heart about helping them and you think of all the places you got to be and the things you got to do and how 
pastor got to be there. And one of the hardest things to do is do what he did, turn around and go back and talk to him. Uh, because we're in a hurry. We're, we're, we're busy, and, and that leads to rudeness. And, and listen, if, if you've ever been on the other end of that, and somebody has kind of brushed you off when you wanted to talk to them, and you've been the recipient of that rudeness, you kind of think, huh, uh, I guess that, that wasn't very nice, or they weren't very nice. And, and, and yet, then you stop and think, have I ever done that to God? Ever got in a hurry? Or kind of brushed God aside? Because I had so much to do? And I didn't take time to thank him or give him the gratitude that I ought to. David is thanking God in Psalm 8. It's a tremendous psalm. And he begins by, in verse 1, by saying, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. And David's going to give some things here to be thankful for, and I'm just going to focus on a, on a couple of them this evening. And uh, then we'll go have our fellowship tonight. But first of all, notice he says he's thanking the Lord for the Lord's majesty. Thanking the Lord for His majesty. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is Your name in all the earth. In verse 3, he says, When I consider Thy heavens, the work of Thy fingers, the moon and the stars which Thou hast ordained. He's thinking about creation and thinking about the majesty of Jesus Christ, the glory of Jesus Christ. The honest truth is, it's never in the Christian life about your glory or my glory. It's always about His glory. Uh, we, we learn one of the things in Reformers Unanimous that Brother Currington brings out is when you give glory to God, glory means to put in a good light. And it's so easy uh, to, to always put ourselves in a good light. Uh, you know, oftentimes you learn in, in, uh, when people are having conflicts, whether it's a husband and wife or it's co-workers or whether it's church members, and you listen to one person's side of the story or version of the story, you, you understand that, uh, that, that you, you're, you're, you're not wise if you just listen to that and take all of that as the truth. Because you need to hear the other person's side of the story. What, why is that? Because we all tend to kind of put things to where we look okay, to where we look good. And, 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 and we, we put ourselves in a good light. Instead of giving glory to God and putting God in the good light. Making sure that He gets the glory. Making sure that the spotlight's on Him and not on us. It's not, it's not well, I thank God that, that you know, uh, I, I thank God He gave me the strength that I worked hard yesterday and I cooked 78 hot dogs and I passed out this many, you know, uh, uh, cotton candies and I was able to do this and I was able to do that and I was able to do this and I'm just thank God I was able to do all that. Well, who was your testimony really about? I, 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 I. And you couched it in between with, well, I want to thank God. So you think you gave God the glory, but what you really wanted everybody to know was how much you did. That's really what you wanted everybody to know. You understand where I'm going? Okay? That's not, David said, I want to, I want to give glory to God. In fact, 1 Corinthians 1. Look look there. Hold your finger or put a little piece of paper there in Psalm 8. We're going to come back there. But look in the New Testament with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, you remember, first, remember the church of Corinth, what they're arguing about? They were having divisions in their church over different preachers. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Peter, and then other ones just said, no, we're not any of those, we just follow Jesus, you know. And, and, but they were just the vice of everybody else, so they were all factioned out, and they were all thinking they were better than somebody else because of who they were following. And so Paul, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, notice verse number 26, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The base things of the world and the things that are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Go back a minute, look. Foolish things of the world, weak things of the world, base things of the world, and despised things. Foolish, 
weak, base, despised. You know who he's talking about? Us. That's who God uses. Next time you think you want to look at somebody and say, ah, I can't believe they did that. You know what? That's what you and I could do too. Any sin, any horrible sin you see somebody do, that's in my heart too. That's in your heart too because our hearts are all wicked. It's, a, it's amazing that God uses any of us and that God will use us. But don't get to thinking you're something. That's what they were doing in Corinth. They were getting puffed up thinking they were somebody. As I said the other night, everybody in the work of God, every Christian in the family of God is important, but no one is necessary. All of us are replaceable. Nobody's irreplaceable. All right? And so he's, he's reminding them of that because look what he said, verse 29, that no flesh should what? Glory in His presence. Don't you glory in what you're doing. Don't you glory in yourself. What's he say? But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So Christ is our wisdom. He's our righteousness. He's our sanctification. He's our redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. He is everything. We are nothing. Plain and simple. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do it to where God looks good. And so whether we eat or drink or sing or teach or preach or go to work or uh, uh, mow the grass or wash the dishes or vacuum the rug, whatever it is we do, we're to do it for the glory of God. We're to do it for the majesty of God, not for ourselves. We're to do it to make God look good, not to make us look good. Okay, and, and so David said, How excellent is thy name in all the earth. You know, majesty is this. It's greatness of appearance. Majesty is dignity. It's grandeur. It's, it's the quality or state of a person which inspires awe or reverence in the beholder. And that's what David had as he looked at God and he looked at creation. I'm told on a clear night, certainly not in the city, but probably in the country, that the human eye will see two to 3,000 stars in the sky just with the human eye. The sun is over 2.5 million miles around at its equator. The ice that covers 98% of Antarctica holds 90% of the world's fresh water. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. But 97% of the earth's water is undrinkable. Our earth is 330 times, 330,000 times smaller than the sun. The earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. Polar bears are capable of jumping as high as 6 feet and can run as fast as 25 miles an hour. I doubt you'll outrun him. A cow will give 200,000 glasses of milk in her lifetime. A woodpecker can peck 20 times per second. Dragonflies are the fastest insta insects. They fly 50 to 60 miles per hour. And this is really something. A flea can jump 130 times higher than their own height. If that was a human being, a six-foot person, six foot tall person could jump 780 feet in the air. Huh? Isn't God amazing? Isn't God amazing when you consider the heavens, when you consider creation, the universe, plant and animal life, the human body itself? It just, it amazes you what God can do and what God has done uh, in creation. So, we thank the Lord for His majesty, for His grandeur, for His greatness, for His glory. And then, He says something else in Psalm 8. I want you to look there. <clears throat> Notice verse number 2. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. And this is thanking the Lord for children. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings 
children. The Bible says children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is His reward. Children, we ought to thank God for children. The little boy at a wedding looked up at his mom and he asked his mom, he said, Mommy, why does the bride wear white? Well, mom said the bride's in white because she's happy and this is the happiest day of her life. And then the little boy looked at his mom and said, well, then why does the groom wear black? Good question. A woman, you might, a woman was at the park with seven children, with her seven children. A passerby said, are all these children yours, lady, or is it a picnic? She said, mister, they're all mine and it's no picnic. <laughs> That's true. And uh, the children are a blessing from the Lord and, and they're a gift from God. And, and again, if they're a gift from God, they're certainly not always what we deserve. And most of the time, and I know parents who uh, have their children and, and they love their children and bring them up and nurture and administer the Lord and they have, well, I'm thinking with, with Jarvis's and all three of their children serving the Lord, all three of their children loving God and uh, even grandchildren. That's a great blessing from God, but I know Jack and Sherry Jarvis. They would never be the ones to, they would never say, well, let me tell you how we did it. Hmm. You know? They would give the glory to God. They would say, you know what? Uh, God turned those kids out right. And uh, he did it. We, we tried to follow what the Bible said, and I know they did, and tried to do what the Lord, and take it the way the Lord said that they should do it. But you know what? It's still the grace of God. Then your children turn out to live for the Lord. And you give God the glory and God the praise. Children are a blessing from God. Little, little boy was praying and he said, God, take care of daddy. Take care of mommy. Take care of sister. Take care of my brother. Take care of the dog. And take care of me. And then he, then he paused for a minute and mom thought he was done. And he said, wait, wait. He said, Lord, please take care of yourself. Because if anything happens to you, we're in big trouble. <laughs> And that's true, you know. Thing happened. That he's a smart kid. There, he was thinking. I like this little story that Johnny was misbehaving, was sent to his room, and after a while, he came out and told his mom that he had thought it over and he had prayed. And the mother said, "That's good." She said, "I hope you prayed for God to help you not misbehave. And if you prayed that, He'll help you." He said, "Well, I didn't pray and ask Him to help me not misbehave." She said, well, what did you pray for? He said, well, I asked him to help you to put up with me. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, kids, okay? Don't do that. But I do know this. God listens when children pray. God listens to the prayers of children. And, and, and he's very careful about that. And so be, be thankful for your children. You know, we live in a day, it's, it's just tragic, I... I don't know where it was. What, I don't know where someone had told me that a, a mother shot her two children and, and, and a passerby found them in the front yard. It's just horrible. What, what, you know, I think part of the last days is when the Bible says that they'll be without natural affection. And that's, you know, when a mother has that kind of thing with her children, you know what? That's not natural. It's natural to love your children, want to be with your children. Mom, don't, don't be one of those moms who say, I just, man, I just got to have a break from these kids. I just, I just get, get, man, somebody else, give me a, give me a break. You know, I, can I, I'll testify. My, I never heard those words from my wife, ever. She, she did everything with our kids, and and we were, we were busy and pastoring a church, and Brother Joe was there when our kids were little, and uh, grew up. But you know, but but can I, can I help you? Part of the reason that was, was because they listened to her. They obeyed what they were told to do. If your kids are running you, you need a break. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not listening to you. They're training you, you're not training them. And, and if you get them in line and, and you, they listen to what you say, they're a joy to be around. And they, they'll, be, they'll bring great pleasure to you. And it's a great delight to be with them. They're benefits. They're, they're a blessing from the Lord. They're a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is His reward. They're a reward for you. 
And so, thank God for the children. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When, when you go to Psalm 127, it talks about, uh, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain to build it, and how the, the children are heritage of the Lord. It talks about happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. You know, a quiver, what goes in a quiver are arrows. Some of the sharpest arrows you have to fight the devil are your children. And you bring them up and you sharpen them and you point them in the right direction. That's a whole other message in itself to get them uh, to avenge, to, to go after the enemy and the avenger. So thank the Lord for your children. Then thirdly, I want you to see, this is interesting, thank the Lord for your rulership. Not his rulership, though we thank God for that, but notice what he said in verse 3. I'm sorry, in starting verse number 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. All of that has been put under dominion, our rulership of you and me. We have some rulership in this world. We have dominion. I read this article this week. It was from um, October 31st of 2007. Uh, George W. Bush was still president then. And it says, an event unprecedented in American history. Brandon Myers, an obscure 10-year-old boy from Iowa with no previous experience in domestic politics took advantage of a clear leadership void and seized control of the United States Tuesday after he slipped away from his White House tour group and locked himself in the Oval Office. The bloodless coup occurred when Myers, a fifth grader at Mulberry Elementary School, stormed into the empty office and seated himself at the president's desk thereby toppling the world's longest-running democracy. Myers spent much of his reign, which lasted from approximately 2 p.m. to 2.15 p.m., spinning in circles in the president's chair before proclaiming that he was President Brandon with a handwritten decree scrawled in cursive on White House stationery. At the press conference, Dana Perino White House Press Secretary said this earlier this afternoon, sometime between a description of the James Buchanan portrait in the main hall and the question and answer session, a pre-adolescent boy overthrew the president and gained executive authority over the United States of America. Several minutes ago, our nation's new leader made his first statement, quote, Brandon rules, <laughs> unquote. And you know, whether we understand it or not, whether we realize it or not, we have some rulership in this world and on this earth. By the way, this, 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 w did you notice what it says? We're made a little lower than the angels, but we're crowned with glory and honor. And we have dominion over the works of his hands. He's put all things under his feet. That's you and me. Notice, all sheep, all oxen, beasts of the field, all the animals. What's more important, if there's a choice between a human and animal, the choice is always human, not animal. Okay? You love animals, and you can be an animal lover, that's fine. But if it's a choice between human beings and animal, you have to take the human being. There's nothing wrong with that, and that's the right thing to do. Fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. We have rulership. You know, most of us know God has allowed us, each of us, to have a free will. We all have freedom to make choices. We have that, the power to do that. He's given us the ability to make those decisions. And sometimes we, they're good ones, and sometimes we make pretty bad ones. And we pay the consequences for those bad sins. You know, uh, somebody says, well, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, sometimes the reason is I'm pretty dumb and I made a dumb decision. And I'm paying the price. Pretty simple. You know, I... I, I reap what I sow. And when I make a, a wrong decision, I'll pay for that and pay the consequences. 
But if I receive, by the way, we said Tib this morning, we can, we can receive or we can refuse. That God's given us that power to make that choice. So we can, if I want something to be different, I have the power to choose to make it different. I have the power to choose to make it to stay the same. And in a sense, I know that sometimes people say, well, God doesn't send anybody to hell. And what they mean by that is God gives people choices. You receive Christ, you go to heaven, you reject him, you'll go to hell. So really, you're making the decision with where you're going to go. And I understand that. As a judge, as a just God, he certainly can send us to hell and be right in his justice because we're guilty in the sight of God. Man, he that believeth not is condemned already. We are already condemned. The only way to lift the condemnation is to receive Christ as your Savior. That lifts the condemnation. If you don't, the judgment's already been, been made. But we have that, 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 uh, that opportunity, that rulership in our life to make those decisions. Do we use that authority? Do we use that free will just to please ourselves? Do we use it just to make life all about us? Or do we choose it to live for God? And to give our lives a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's your choice. Nobody, nobody, you know, God doesn't, God really doesn't force you to do anything. He leaves that to us. He wants us to do it because he wants the motivation to be of love and not because, well, I have to do this. Well, I have to, have to do this, or I have to do that, or I, God's going to do this to me if I don't do this. See, God did not break that way. He's, he's given us that rulership. How are you using that? So we can thank God for that. Then the last thing I want to say this tonight, and let's go, is let's thank God for one another. That's not Psalm 8. That's just me. Um, I, I, the, what I came to mind as I was preparing this was Paul saying to the church of Philippi, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And, and he was just thanking God for that church at Philippi. And you know, you, you never go up to, a, to one of these big days, and especially the fair day, which involves a lot of work and a lot of people, that, that you don't just, just begin to thank God for the people who are willing to work. You know, there's, I counted up the other, yesterday, Last night, actually, I think there were 36 different families, individuals that, that uh, took flyers and passed out flyers. And uh, that's, that, that's good. You know, there are a lot of different people involved getting the word out. And then, you know, there's, there's so much. There's, there's uh, folks who had to call and, and, and take letters and, and got some of the, the, the Jolly Pirate donuts and the... Uh, the different things that were donated, the, the roadhouse and the, the night stay in the motel and the donations that came in, hot dogs and buns. Some of that stuff was donated. Some of it we had to purchase, but we had gift cards. Meyer gave us gift card and Kroger and Turkey Hill and different ones donated gift cards so we could purchase some of these things. But people had to go get those things. Uh, the fellows who got all the stuff out of the shed and got it into Fellowship Hall and then those who sorted the games out and made sure what, what was in the games and what are we missing, what do we need, and what about prizes, and we need to get more prizes and then organize those and then get signs made and, and uh, make sure everything is laid out. And then there's <coughs> the materials and the supplies for the food and uh, you know getting all those things together and, and what about ice and what about all those things. And uh, then people have to get those things. And then people come early on Saturday and you... <clears throat> you blow up balloons and you, you put popcorn in bags and you, you put cotton candy in bags and you start grilling hot dogs and you put up canopies and you, 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 you drag things in and out of the, the shed and you get a dunk tank put together and uh, just uh, on and on and on and on and welcoming people and smiling at folks and being friendly to people and thanking them for being here and uh, they, they, they feel that. And I guess, I guess, I just, you know, I, I, I think of all those. And, and I, I can't begin to think of all the folks and how many people would be involved in all that. But there's a lot. And, of course, all of you were involved yesterday in, in what went on and what takes place. And, 
And it takes everybody to have an impact in people's lives. And I guess I just want to tell you I'm thankful for you. And thank you for being a church that, that will give a Saturday and give themselves to serve the community, to serve their Lord, and to serve their church. Uh, that's, that's, that's not a normal thing. I, I, don't wanna, I hate to tell you that because then you'll think, well, maybe, maybe we're not normal. Well, we're not normal, okay? So just accept it. That's what we are, okay? But you, you, we, we need this, and it does. It, it not only is an outreach, and we obviously we're praying that many folks we can see saved as we follow up on these visits and go to see families and, and ask God to give us some families from this big day. But, you know, there's something about everybody working together that it does something in our heart. And we can kind of see what, what the Lord can do when we all work together. And so I just want to pause to say I thank God for you tonight. Thank you for being a great church and people that are willing to serve the Lord uh, with your life. It was a good, good day. And we look forward to, to many more if the Lord will tarry. Amen? Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for our church. Thank you, Lord, for these people who have a heart to serve you. Uh, thank you for the labor, the labor of love that went into the country fair this year, for all the, the work. And, Lord, Many things that went on that nobody saw, but Lord, remind the workers that you saw everything. That nothing we ever do or say or take care of in your name and because we love you is never unnoticed by you. Lord, I pray that we would express the gratitude to one another. What a joy it is to work with people and serve with people that love you. Lord, thank you for the servants that you've assembled in this place. And I pray, Lord, that you would always keep the servant's heart and the happy spirit that we have in this church that's here tonight. And Lord, I'm praying that we'll take time to always thank you for your majesty and for our children and for the rulership you've given to us and then just for one another. What a blessing it is to be part of the family of God. And Lord, we love you this evening. Thank you for loving us, for what you do in each one of our hearts and lives. Lord, continue to work in us and work through us what is well-pleasing in your sight. We love you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll have the invitation here in just a moment. If you're here tonight, I just want to give you an opportunity to thank the Lord for what he's done in your life. Thank the Lord for what he did at the fair yesterday. Maybe you want to thank the Lord for your children. Maybe you just want to thank the Lord for who he is and his majesty. Thank the Lord for the dominion, the rulership he's given in your life, that you'll make the right choices with be a good steward of what he's given to you. Maybe you just want to thank the Lord tonight for a few minutes. If God has dealt with your heart, I want you to, to listen to him and obey him. I'm going to pray. Then Lisa will play. We'll stand to our feet and Lisa will play. And God has dealt with your heart. You respond to him this evening. All right. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for ministering to our hearts tonight. Thank you again, Lord, for the wonderful folks in this room. Thank you for their labor of love. Thank you for their willingness to serve their Lord and Savior in the way they've served them these last few weeks. And Father, we bow the knee now and ask you to bless the effort. There's still people to go see and visits to be made and people who need to know we care about them because God loves them. And I pray that you'll touch the hearts of people whom we'll go visit. We'll, we'll see you do a wonderful work in some lives. And we'll give you the praise. We'll give you all the glory for what we see happen. Have your way now in these next few moments of invitation, and we'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, the pianist is going to play. And as she plays, take time to thank the Lord, will you?
Just come and kneel and thank the Lord for His goodness. That's right. Making the sun to shine, putting the stars in the sky for flowers that bloom, the ocean so blue. Thank you, Lord, for the sparrow that sings. It makes sweet melody for the rivers that flow. The rain and the snow, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. I just want to okay. thank the second you, verse, okay. for Listen my the home verse. and family, for life's joys that you've given me, for shoes on my feet. Yes. Plenty to eat. Thank you, Lord, That's right. for the church where I worship and pray, for Amen. the freedoms that I have today. Sweet Spirit, I feel your presence so real. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Sing it with them now. I, I just, just want, want to thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. 
I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for your goodness to us, and thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Forgive us for not pausing enough to say thank you. Oftentimes we just get busy and we finish one thing and we go right on to the next thing. And we never stop to say thank you. And Lord, you've been mighty good to our church. And I thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for these folks in this room tonight. And Lord, I pray your, your blessing upon them. Lord, as we go to the fellowship now, bless the food. Uh, Lord, I pray it will not only nourish us, but you'll bless our fellowship over the food tonight, guide and direct in our conversations. Lord, I pray that you'll uh, be with each one here and as they go to bed tonight, Lord, multiply the hours of sleep, make it restful, make it refreshing. And Lord, may they wake up tomorrow and say it sure was a, a wonderful day in the house of the Lord. It sure was a good Saturday and Sunday serving God. And Lord, I pray we'll go about our business and interact with people uh, and they'll see a smile on our face and joy in our heart for what took place the last couple days. We love you, Lord, and we want to say thank you. And we say it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you head next door, and uh, if they're not quite ready, bear with them, but uh, they should be pretty close. And uh, enjoy the fellowship. They'll, they, they should be all set or pretty close. And uh, go ahead and get your children from the nursery, and we'll be in good shape. And we'll see you over in the fellowship hall. God bless you. Play that through once, Lisa, would you? <laughs>